Imagine this. It's 2004, and you're either a kid or a young teenager walking in the mall. Either with your friends or family, you're all having a good time until you turn your head to see a rather particular store. This store was unlike anything else in the mall. Unlike the brightly lit stores playing Yeah by Usher, the radio edit of Call On Me by Eric Prides, or any other big pop song that was popular at the time. This store was dark in its lighting and aesthetic, as it was playing songs from bands like Linkin Park, Metallica, and Evanescence. You see a literal cage-like gate as its doors, and behind it was a shirt that had a creepy little girl holding both a knife and a severed nose, with the text, Got Your Nose. You're probably either creeped or weirded out. Though you eventually go into the store and realize it's not that bad, and depending on the type of kid you were in school, whether that be a jock, nerd, emo kid, or goth, you probably either loved or hated that store. That store was Hot Topic. But you probably wouldn't believe me now if you saw what the store was like these days. Instead of gates, we have a normal black door, songs range from pop punk, rap, or pop in general. That creepy little girl was replaced with Funko Pop figures of famous pop culture icons and the only thing that seems the same is the lighting. Despite all of that, it's still Hot Topic. But what caused it to change so much? Why did it go from that creepy store to another source of pop culture filled to the brim with Minecraft, Adventure Time, Harry Potter, or anime? Well, maybe it's time we finally figure that out. But to do that, we've got to go back to the 80s. The 80s is often associated with slashers, vaporwave music, Rubik's Cubes, the NES, and cartoons that were essentially glamorized commercials. But this isn't everything the 80s was. It was a time of rebellion, for the youth to stand up against a man and tell them that they weren't going to submit to their demands. This was a theme for a lot of movies from that point in time, like Footloose, Cry Baby, and The Breakfast Club. Films that starred young characters who were held down by either an adult figure or some form of authority and decided to fight back. A lot of this rebellion was often associated with music and dance, as the film Footloose was a movie about a town that made dancing illegal. Either you were a girl who just wanted to have fun, or had enough and were not going to take it. One TV channel understood this perfectly, and thus MTV had taken over. When MTV was first launched on August 1st, 1981 by Viacom, its purpose was originally just to air music videos. It opened up with the fitting lines of, ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll. Voiced by John Lack, the creator of MTV over top of footage of the Apollo 11 moon landing. While the main purpose was just to play music videos, MTV would eventually expand with original series like Beavis and Butthead, Liquid Television, and Aeon Flux, as the channel originally was aimed towards young adults, as the current version is more aimed at teenagers. Another thing that would begin to get popular within the 80s would be both the gothic rock music genre and the gothic subculture. Both of these would stand out heavily from other music genres and subcultures, but there was one problem. A lot of punk rock, gothic, metal, or overall alternative music genres would feature both performers and their fans wearing things like spiked accessories and facial piercings, though there weren't many well-known stores that sold such apparel or at least an easy way to access them. Enter Orv Madden, the eventual founder of the Hot Topic brand. Orv was born in Olton, Iowa and went to the University of Chicago to get his MBA or his master's business degree. Before starting Hot Topic, Orv worked as an executive and eventually became the vice president of the Children's Place for six years. Orv noted an opportunity that MTV and the subculture slash music genres presented. An opportunity to make a story that could resonate well with these audiences and sell music-based items that couldn't easily be found anywhere else. Using his experience at the children's place, he opened the first Hot Topic, which according to the official Hot Topic website's history section was located in Montclair, California in 1989. Much like current stores, the first Hot Topic sold dozens of music-related items like t-shirts, spiked accessories, and piercings. Though as a side note, I would take the history section of the Hot Topic website with a grain of salt. It often claims that the brand was always about pop culture and they never catered to groups like the gothic subculture before, but just by looking at the same images found in this section you can tell this is kind of a lie. While it's true that the gothic subculture was not the only demographic that Hot Topic was trying to bring in, they were still a big part of the store's history. Nonetheless, it's time for us to get back on track and move on to the 90s. In the 90s, the gothic subculture was at its highest peak, and Hot Topic was starting to open more stores across the country. This is the point in time when Hot Topic started to sell a bit more items based on pop culture, but it was a healthy amount and didn't take over the store just yet. It was more like a healthy evolution than a complete change, as in 1993, Hot Topic got its first commercial. Hot 
topic. The store also became the first end mall store to sell body piercings, and in 1996, the official website had opened. Things were going well, and the evolution was at a good pace, but real drastic changes wouldn't come until 2000, when Orv Madden left his company. After Orv stepped down as the CEO of Hot Topic, Betsy McLaughlin took his spot. I apologize if I said her name incorrectly. Despite the change of CEO, which for any company or business can cause a slide in quality or unwanted changes, Betsy did a lot of great things for the brand. During her time as CEO, Hot Topic was named one of the 100 fastest growing companies by Forbes, 100 best companies at work by Fortune, and Betsy herself was named one of the top 5 business leaders of 2003 by Investor's Business Daily. And in 2010, Hot Topic was named the number one most trustworthy retail by Forbes. This was for a number of reasons. One was that Hot Topic had started a second brand of stores called Torrid in 2001. Torrid is a store chain that primarily sells clothing items for plus size women. Though nowadays, Torrid is its own company and has no current affiliation with Hot Topic. This wouldn't be the only other business venture the company would take, though it would be their most successful. In 2008, Shockhound was launched. Shockhound was a social media site centered around music, much like the forgotten MySpace. However, it was publicly announced by Hot Topic that Shockhound would be shut down in 2011. Another reason why it was such a good era for the store could also be pointed at the newly discovered emo scene. ABC4's Reed Cowan, now with us, has a special report for parents about the so-called emo culture. Reed, what is emo? Well, Barb, this is something that has come out of the internet and into music and the lives of Utah teens. Emo is found in books, magazines, even the hit movie Spider-Man 3. Well, parents, there are some dangerous elements to this culture psychologists say you need to know about. And we want to warn you that some of what you are about to see is created by teens and maybe just a little bit disturbing. The emo scene is nothing new. Technically, it started in the mid-80s. Though much like gothic rock and the gothic subculture, both the music genre and group can be considered separate but also related, as the emo scene more or less started around the early 2000s. Now, before we continue, I must preface something. Goth and emo are not the same thing. They are considered different, though they are similar in some ways, such as the darker style, origins from music genres that started in the 80s, and both were very popular in the early 2000s. Darkness is nihilistic, whereas emos is cynical. Wait, I thought we were cynical. W whatever, it doesn't matter. No, see, you're nihilistic. Oh yeah, you're right. Granted, the emo scene was just a bit more popular at the time due to how new it was and how many bands like Evanescence, Fall Out Boy, Paramore, My Chemical Romance, and Green Day were becoming popular during this time as well. Hot Topic was also something that took advantage of the trend of the emo scene. They were already selling Nightmare Before Christmas and South Park merchandise in the 90s, and with the new bands and singers coming around, new merch had to be sold as well. Despite the focus on more emo kids and leaning more towards pop culture, this was still seen as another healthy evolution. But things would change in the 2010s, in both a good and a bad way. In 2011, Betsy also stepped down as CEO, but still works in other businesses. At this time, Lisa Harper took spot as the next CEO. I couldn't find much information about Lisa Harper during her time at Hot Topic. All I could find out was how she left the company, which I will go over later. At this time was the complete takeover of pop culture. Many would put two and two together and try and blame Lisa for the changes, but I couldn't find much information on whether or not she was the one who made these changes, or if it was another form of management. But I did find some interesting information I will go over after we're done with this little history lesson. In 2012, Hot Topic opened Black Heart Lingerie, a store that, of course, sells lingerie and clothing for women. On May 26, 2015, Hot Topic tried to buy out Geek Cadet, a company that owns the retail store Think Geek, which sells electronics, toys, clothes, and computer add-ons for $122 million, but failed when they were instead offered $140 million by GameStop. But 2015 wasn't a complete loss, as in the same year, Hot Topic opened Box Lunch, another store that also sells pop culture related items. But the difference is, is for that every $10 spent at the store, the store will also donate a meal for someone in need. Only a year later, Lisa would step down as CEO. Why? Well, have you heard of Belk? 
Belk is a chain of department stores that started in 1888 by William Henry Belk. Many CEOs are relatives or descendants of William, from his brother John Belk who became William's partner, and Tim Belk who was the last CEO to be a part of the Belk family line. Tim retired in 2016 as Lisa was brought on board to be the first CEO of Belk not to be related to the Belk family name. That same year, Steve Rains had become CEO and has been since then, at least during the time of writing this video as anything could change. It's only been three years since he became CEO, so there hasn't been that many changes. Most of the drastic changes came during Lisa's era, but now that we've taken a gander at the store's history, I think it's time to see what happened. So what happened? How did Hot Topic go from that creepy store in the mall to pop culture reference, the store? Like I said, many of the changes came during Elisa's time as CEO, though I'd say it was far from her fault. In fact, even to this day, Hot Topic is still massively successful as a brand, but we're not here trying to figure out whether or not the store is still thriving. We're here to figure out what changed, and I'd say Hot Topic just had to adapt to the current times. The gothic subculture is still very much alive, though not as popular as it was in the 90s, the emo scene is considered dead, and when looked back on, it's seen as a trend for the 2000s, and speaking of the 2000s, a ton of media was trying to be hardcore or edgy as these days things are a lot more bright and lighthearted. This is why in the early 2010s, many of the emo bands that I mentioned before either changed over to pop music or just disbanded. Bands and singers like Paramore, Avril Lavigne, and Fall Out Boy had changed from their emo punkish style to more of a pop feel, while bands like My Chemical Romance just split. Most of this is because the emo scene is dead. Hot Topic 2 had to adapt for these new times as the pop culture takeover mainly came in the point in time these bands also changed. Another possibility is the hipster scene, which was the next group to become popular after the emo scene had died. Hipsters are basically the polar opposite of the gothic and emo scenes. Not only that, but hipsters have more of an attraction to pop culture than those other groups as well, which is perfect for the current iteration of Hot Topic. But, one of the definite factors was the store's look. Apparently during the mid-2000s, Hot Topic was losing customers and many blamed a darker aesthetic. For an average consumer, like a parent, a teenager, or the mainstream in general not interested in alternative content, this could be seen as a turnoff from the darker style and the gothic aesthetic, so in 2007, Hot Topic announced that it would remodel their stores to have a brighter, more pleasing look. This is when things started to change. Not to say that other changes wouldn't have happened if they had kept their original look, but it is very well possible that is the case. But I guess that answer is that. From the death of a scene to losing customers, Hot Topic changed because it had to. Yes, you could argue that it should have struck its ground and kept its original look and items, but we have to remember, Hot Topic is a business first and foremost, and what made a business successful back then might not work years later. Not only that, but things change and companies often have to change with later generations if they hope to continue their business. It's not just Hot Topic. After the failure that is the Wii U, Nintendo had to ditch the casual market for the Switch, and look how that's working out for them. Keep in mind, the Wii U came right after the Wii, the most successful home console of the 7th generation due to the casual market. The Wii U tried to capitalize on the same market, but Nintendo didn't realize that the casual audience had abandoned them for smartphones and mobile games, so they had no choice but to change. Companies will do this all the time. The companies might be completely different in the next decade or even the next year. I wouldn't worry too much though. Like I said with Nintendo, they went from being about gamers to the casual market and back to gamers. The same thing could hypothetically happen to Hot Topic if they needed to. And even so, Hot Topic is no longer the only source for dark, alternative, gothic and or emo content as we've seen all sorts of websites, YouTubers, and media keeping that aesthetic going. You may not like the current era of Hot Topic, but we can appreciate the good times we had when we were teens heading out to the mall to hang out with friends and finding ourselves walking into those bronze gates. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, then please, share it with your friends and give it a like. If you'd like to see more from 2000 Remnants, then please comment down below on whether or not you want the series to continue, what dark alternative thing I should talk about next, or any form of criticism from good, bad, or how your viewing experience can be improved. If you'd like to subscribe, then I must tell you that Cackling Pumpkins is not just for talking about media. Cackling Pumpkins is a variety channel that has let's plays, vlogs, comedy skits, web series, short films uploaded almost every week. You can also follow me on Twitter if you like to see my adventures outside of YouTube, like my art, news about my upcoming webcomic Alice Darkson coming in 2020, and my venture on learning code and game development. Until then, this has been Cackling Pumpkins. Your connection will be strange.
There's even an internet quiz for kids to determine if they too are emo. Black like my soul, red like blood. My heart was born broken, it says. But we didn't have to go to the internet to learn about emo culture in Utah. Every teenager we asked quickly said, emo is everywhere. You wear black, it's always depressed, sadness, and basically keeping themselves. 